Hello guys, it's me Simura Hara and in this video we'll talk about the sixth episode. Honestly, I like this episode very much and I put it in the second place after the first one. Although this episode surpasses it in terms of animation because it contained one of the big fights in this arc, which is Rocky's fight against Isnot. So the episode started with Ichigo preparing to return to Serity after he finally finished his training in the Royal Palace. The scenes of Ichigo with Zero Squad made it clear to some that the Royal Palace is a place within the Soul Society and not in a world by itself. Because some still believe that the Royal Palace exists in a place far from the Soul Society. But that's not the case. It is, as Yamamoto said, is a separate dimension within the Soul Society. And Ichigo, in order to descend to Serity, had to pass 72 liars. And in order to do this without any problems, Sinji Maro made these special clothes for him. And by the way, as it appeared to you, Ichigo was the last person to finish the training. In the previous episode, we saw the arrival of Renji and Rukia. In this episode, we saw the arrival of Byakuya, and all of them were wearing special coats. However, what frankly surprised me was the first indication of Ichigo's great strength. As Kirinji said, it takes about a week uh, for Ichigo with a regular shimpu to go through those 72 liars. However, Ichigo said that he would do it in a half day. Can you imagine it guys? Half day. Thus, I'm willing to see how Kobo will use Ichigo in the upcoming events and how he will reveal his true powers. On the other hand, we have seen the completion of the scenes of Hashfeld and Yuri. Honestly, I like the angle of direction in this scene where we see Hashfeld and Yuryu facing each other face to face and the throne of Yu Hawak separates them. Hashfeld who has the support of the Sternreicher and Yuryu who has the support of Yu Hawak. And also I like this scene of the blue flames. You shouldn't forget that these flames had a major role in the invasion of the Quincy's on Wei Komondo as well as uh, on the Serechi. And as Pishi said, these flames are condensed Rishi that have the ability to burn even the rocks and sand of Wei Komondo and turn them to ashes. And speaking of Yuhabach, there was a big change of events in this scene. But frankly, I liked very much these changes. In the manga, the one who was with Hashfeld was not Yuyu, but Yuhaba, so that he was present when Hashfeld was applying the death penalty to both BG9 and Kangdu. So that in the manga, we saw how BG9 tells Yuhaba that the release of the Vault Sanding revive them and so they can fight again. While Kangdu showed features other than those in the anime, he talked about how he didn't want to be executed by Hashfeld, but rather by Yuhaba. But overall, the scene was scary and bloody in the anime. Although Kang Du activated the ability of Iron, it was of no use to him in front of Hashfeld's power, who with one blow was able to cut off both the heads of BG9 and Kang Du, as if it was clear message to Yu that there is no escape from Yu especially after he gave him the Schrift A. Also, Hashfeld spoke about an important point regarding Yu which is that all Sternreicher who are killed in the battle, all their powers and skills belong to Yuhabach. Therefore, I believe that Yuhabach is able to use all the abilities of the Sternreicher that he originally gave it to them. And we get to the heart of this episode, which is the fight between Esnot and Rokia. This fight carried several things that we must speak about it, which is that the difference between the training in the Royal Palace and Serity. It's like heaven and earth. All those who went to the Royal Palace had the same issue, discovering the true power of their Zanpakuto. For example, Rinji discovered that he was fighting with half the name of the Bankai, and Ichigo also didn't know the secret of his Quincy and Shinigami powers. And in this episode, we discovered that Rukia finally knew the real power of her Zanpakuto, and Byakuya's Zanpakuto became on another level of power. So what I liked about this fight was that Kubu didn't rely on the usual cliches such as that Byakuya must face Esnot again, so all what Byakuya had to do is one blow from his Shikai to show Esnot that he's not a rival to him anymore. That's why I hope that Kubu will provide Byakuya a real battle where he fights with all his powers that he gained in the Royal Palace. Anyway, returning to the fight between Esnot and Rokia, 
we discovered that the power of her Zanpakuto is that it lowers her body temperature to the limits of absolute zero, between the normal freezing point and absolute zero. So Rukia can manipulate her temperature and based on this concept Rukia tried to counter the ability of Ace Knot by making herself in that state of temporary death by manipulating Rishi. Because according to Ace Knot philosophy, all causes of fear have one source, which is death. So by killing herself temporarily through making her cells inactive, she had freezed the fear of Ace Knot. And by the way, what Rokia did reminds me of the fights between Sajin and Bambita. In order to get rid of the ability of the explosion that affects living beings, Sajin gained an immortal body and gave up his life for that. As for Ace Knot, I liked his transformation in the worst stunning phase. His shape was terrifying, as well as his strength. If we say that Rukia's ability stops her cells, which makes the fear ability unable to penetrate her body, the Vault Sunning of Ace Knot attacks the optic nerves of the victim, so you will enter into a spiral of fear. So the scene of the insects ascending to Rukia was frightening and reminded us of what Piakia went through when he faced the same ability in the first invasion. However, the latter had only one person in his heart, which is Rukia. While Rokia had Piakia Ichigo Orihimi uh, that appeared in her memories. That's why I wonder where is Rinji? <laughs> anyway, back to the fight, Rokia would have met the same fate as her brother had it not been for his intervention in a legendary scene in which we saw some of Piakia's strength, who left the task of eliminating Esno to his younger sister where for the first time in the story she would use the Bankai. Previously, when the Bankai appeared in the manga, I didn't really understand its mechanism. But because of today's episode, I learned that it relies on a pillar of ice energy connected to Rokia, so that it empowers her to use all that ice power through her sword in order to direct towards the enemy. The strength of ice and the degree of its coldness are at an extraordinary level as it destroys everything in front of it and the Bankai gives a beautiful appearance to Rokia so that she wears an ice dress that makes her appear in this elegant form. However, the Bankai carries a danger to Rokia so that she's still unable to fully control the Bankai because of its destructive power and any mistake may pose a danger to her. And about the last scenes of this episode we have seen Yachiro with Isani and the appearance of a new generator. The next episode probably will be one of the great big episodes of this score. Not only this score, but the entire season. So guys, tell me your opinions about this episode and see you in my next video.